Ruchem Aboyim, again, welcome to our home. <laughs> we lost our recording, guys, so it was a little confusing. Don't be surprised. Anyways, thank you for attending. And uh, again, tonight we're, uh, this week on my thoughts, we will continue our in-depth discussion of the Amida uh, with the seventh blessing and the prayer. Again, this is the eighth lecture of the Amida. Now, this is also the fourth of the 13 personal requests that we offer to God Almighty daily, except on the Shabbat and the Yom Tovim. In this prayer, we request of God, our Father in Heaven, to re'eno the onyen. Please be cognizant of our afflictions. And these next three blessings in this section refer to physical, the emotional and material needs of each and every individual. The Talmud of Megillah, states that the request in the Amida follows a logical sequence. First, we ask for intellect, then for a path to repentance, followed by a plea for forgiveness. However, in this prayer, we ask God, our Father in Heaven, to release us from any mental anguish and or emotional pain that we may be suffering from. The men of the Great Assembly, the Ashik Nessus Agdola Institute, that before we request our physical well-being, that we should first address the emotional and spiritual challenges that we face daily in our lives. The prayer opens with the word re'eno, which means please see or observe. Our sages tell us that ain't shmiya korea, that hearing something is not the same as seeing something. As one of God's children, we are asking him as our father to see onyenu, our pain and discomfort firsthand. No loving father can view their child suffering and in pain and, and not react. The pain felt by a loving father who observes their beloved child's suffering is real and deep. Our sages tell us that everything is in the hands of heaven except for the fear of heaven. You know, there are different explanations to the statement. I personally prefer the explanation that states that the fear of heaven means that God Almighty, like any loving parent, fears that we, his children, will make the wrong decisions in our lives. Since we don't always know what are the correct answers to our difficulties, we are doing, we ask him to re'ein the onyen, to, so to speak, wage our battles. Uh, we acknowledge that solving our problems is the true challenge in life. As it states in Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of the Fathers, Benzoma asked, Who is strong? He answers, He who subdues his evil inclination. The Talmud, the Trek de Kedushin, cautions us that we are locked in a constant moral battle against our evil inclination. He is constantly trying to destroy us. Now, even when we win a battle, well, he still continues the war. He never agrees to a ceasefire. Were it not for the fact that we are assisted with si'ata dishmaya, the help of heaven, we would never be able to overcome our selfish, egotistical, and self-centered desires. The prayer continues with the request that he should that you should redeem us speedily for the sake of your name. You know, these words are not just a request for ourselves. In a sense, we are primarily praying for the honor of God, our Father in Heaven. You know, when you witness a, the son of a, a very wealthy and powerful individual suffering, you wonder, how could his father allow him to suffer so greatly? It is true that God deserves better children than we are. However, he has expressed clearly in his Torah in many places just as the portion of Rie, that he has chosen us to be his children as it states, Bonim Atem Lashem Elokechem, that you are the children of the Lord your God. That being the case, when he allows the nations of the world to persecute us, when they witness all the travails that we have been forced to endure throughout the ages, it is seen as a chil Lashem, a desecration of God's name. We acknowledge the fact that we have little or no merit, which is the reason as to why we beseech him to, to, see, be, to redeem us, 
only for the sake of your name. You know, we emphasize that the redemption should come now, Nehera, quickly, so that this desecration, this Chil Hashem, should finally come to an end. The prayer continues with the word, Ki Kel Goel Chazek Atom, for you are our powerful Redeemer. There's a saying in Judaism that Yeshua Hashem Ki Hiref Ayin, that God's salvation can come as swiftly as the blink of an eye. The Hebrew word Hiref can be referring to releasing one's hold as a result of sheer exhaustion. Uh, come on, we've been waiting for centuries for our final redemption and we are filled with disappointment and despair. But we need to know with complete certainty that God Almighty can open our eyes and show us the path of our salvation in an instant. The prayer ends with the words, Baruch Atah Hashem, Goel Yisrael. Blessed are you, Hashem, Redeemer of Israel. This is in contrast to the prayer that we recite immediately before we begin the Amidah, which concludes with the words, Ga'al Yisrael, which means that he has redeemed Yisrael. These words are stated in the past tense. This is an allusion to all of the previous salvations that we and our ancestors have experienced in our past. You know, the word goal, redeem, is found in this request three times. Anything mentioned three times constitutes a chazaka, what we call a precedence, an obligation. God, our benevolent Father in heaven, is promising us that the redemption is ongoing. In fact, the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word goel, is 40. The three times that this word is mentioned in the prayer may be an illusion to the three times that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, spent 40 days on the mountain when he received the Torah directly from God Almighty. However, this blessing is recited in the present tense, a daily request for our salvation. You know, in Tehillim, in Psalm 117, it's the shortest psalm in the book of Tehillim. It consists of only two verses. The first verse states, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples. Then he concludes with the verse, For his loving kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. You know, we think about it, it's kind of strange that this psalm is referring to the nations of the world, praising God Almighty for his loving kindness towards the Jewish nation. Why, why would the nations of the world do this? They tell a story about Tsar Nicholas II, who was a rabid anti-Semite. He had tried many times to rid Russia of all of its Jews, but somehow every time he tried to pass a law that would accomplish his goal, the Jews were able to counteract his plans. Finally, he came up with a plan that he was certain would succeed. So one night, he assembled all the members of his legislative body into one hall. He told them that, there, that he was ordering them to write up a law that would rid Russia once and for all of all of her Jewish subjects. He instructed them that he would return to the hall at midnight, and by that time, he expected them to have the law drafted. He stationed two armed guards at the door and told them that no one, no one could enter or leave until he returned at midnight. And with that, he turned and left the hall. The politicians went right to work, and shortly before 9 o'clock, they had finished drafting a law that would fulfill exactly what the Tsar had requested. Not long after they had finished, the doors to the hall opened, and in walked the Tsar. He asked them if they had finished drafting the law. Well, they said yes. Well, he asked to see it. They handed him the law that they had drawn up, he sat down in a chair by the fire and began reading the draft. He didn't seem very happy. He got up, grunted, swore, and then threw all the papers into the fire. He turned and left the hall in a rage without saying a word. Well, the politicians really didn't know what to do. They had not left them with any instructions, and it was too late to start all over again. And in addition, he really hadn't told them what it was in the law that did not meet his approval. So they decided that since he had commanded them to stay until midnight, 
and that they would wait until that time. After all, in the next room there were refreshments so they could entertain themselves with food and drink, and they waited until midnight. At midnight, the doors of the hall swung, and op swung open, and in walked the Tsar. He asked them if they had finished drafting the new law. They said that they had. Well, he asked them to see it. They replied that would be impossible to do so since he had already thrown the only draft of the law into the fire. Well, he became incensed. He ordered the guards to arrest them all and to have them shot for disobeying his orders. They told them that he had visited the hall earlier that evening. At that time, he had read the draft, and it seemed like he didn't like it since he had thrown it into the fire. Well, he called them all liars. He said that this was the first time that he had returned to the hall that night. The Tsar then called in the two guards and asked them if anyone had entered the hall since he had left earlier in that evening. The guards said no. No one had entered the hall except for the Tsar at nine o'clock. He then just shook his head. And as he was leaving, he repeated over and over again, the God of the Jews, the God of the Jews. Yes, it is the nations of the world that really know how God Almighty, our benevolent Father in Heaven, looks out for His special nation, Israel, even more than we realize. This is why God Almighty orchestrates scenarios that compel us to call out to Him in prayer. In Rahman al the massacre that was perpetrated in Israel on October 7, was initiated against those Israelis that were attending a peace festival. Those who were in attendance were secular Israelis. God Almighty allowed a scenario to exist that made even those Jews who are secular turn to him in prayer. Today, there are more Jews wearing tzitzit and putting on tefillin in Israel than ever before. In fact, Israel ran out of tzitzit and had to have them imported from other countries. As the saying goes, there is no atheist in the foxhole. What I find most interesting about this prayer is that it is the root of anti-Semitism. The world doesn't hate us because of our noses. The world hates us because of our God. We, we are not black. We can hide in the world, as many Jews did after the Holocaust. Our physical appearance does not tell the world that we are Jewish. In fact, in whatever country that we have resided, we begin to look like everyone else, partially due to converts. No one can look at us and know whether we are Jewish or not. If we don't call ourselves a Jew, or if we don't choose to live in the land of Israel, no one cares. You know, we can convert to Christianity or Islam and become the Pope or even an Imam. It is only when we call ourselves Jewish or live in the land of Israel that the world hates us and devises plans for our total extermination. The ending of this prayer expresses our belief that the final redemption is an ongoing process that is occurring daily in our lives. God Almighty is waiting for us to nitzach el Hashem, to cry out to Him, just as our ancestors did when they were enslaved in Egypt. Once we do so, then He will shma koleinu, He will hear our voices, and He will bring about the final redemption with the coming of Mashiach Sakeno. Let it be quickly now. Let us all pray for a quick and decisive victory in Gaza with the defeat of Hamas and the total destruction of all the evil in the world. May he bring home all the hostages safely, cure the sick and injured, and comfort all the mourners. May he bring home all of our brave IDF soldiers safely, led by Mashiach Sakeno quickly and in our time. Again, let it be now. Again, thank you very much for attending, for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you uh, have not subscribed, please do. Push the like button and please share with your friends. Uh, again, this will not be another week without a musical rendition. Uh, our recorder guy is on vacation. Anyways, God bless and be well. I hope this worked out for everybody. Um, and again, thank you for attending. Again, God should bless you and yours with happiness, health, and success in all that you do. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.